All right, here's our lesson three homework video, day one of related rates, where we are going to be taking derivatives of formula, not just equations with x's and y's. So different variables, different derivatives. We're going to be d, d, t. So perimeter of a rectangle, let's say it's twice the length plus twice the width. Taking the derivative of that. I will get dp dt, so the change in perimeter is equal to twice the change in the length plus twice the change in the width. Perimeter of a square, should probably keep it simple. I have four of my same side lengths, so I wouldn't use the same as the perimeter of a rectangle. And then the derivative. change in the perimeter is equal to four times the change in one of the side lengths. Area of a circle. Change in the area. be determined by derivative of r squared is 2r dr dt. I'm going to put the 2 in front of the pi, so 2 pi r dr dt. So the change in the area is equal to the circumference of the circle times the change in the radius. I just took the derivative using the derivative rules. Perimeter of a circle, circumference. dt equal 2 pi dr dt. Area of a rectangle. I have to use the product rule here. Change in the area is equal to change in the length times the width plus the change in the width times the length. Relationship between the radius and the diameter. Uh, two r's are equal to d. This is a very important thing that you need to know. Uh, I'm not going to, you won't be given this formula. You're not going to give any of the formulas above us. Uh, only the ones that I gave you will you not have to know. So 2 dr dt will equal d d dt. Pythagorean theorem is what we're going to use for distance. We have a horizontal distance squared plus a vertical distance squared is equal to a diagonal distance squared. We get 2x dx dt plus 2y y dt equals 2d. 2d d d dt. And you can cancel all the twos, which is what we'll do because it's easy. All right, here are the formulas you don't have to have memorized. They'll be given to you, like volume of the sphere. I take the derivative of that, dv dt equals 4 thirds pi, just constants, r cubed. Derivative is 3r squared. So the 4 thirds times the 3, I mean, I'll, I'll just show it for this one. But the 3s will cancel and you'll get dv dt equals 4 pi r squared dr dt. Volume of a cylinder with a radius of 4. So I'm going to go ahead and just make this a little bit simpler for you because if we know a volume of a cylinder with a radius of 4, I can have a specific formula for the volume of a cylinder with a radius 4. It becomes 16 pi h, and the derivative of this is dv dt equals 16 pi dh dt. Volume of a cone with h equal to 1 fourth r. Well, the volume of this cone with this 1 fourth r is h. Wherever I see h, I can replace it with 1 fourth r. 
I could simplify this to be 1 12th r cubed, then take the derivative of it. dz dt equals 1 4th r squared dr dt. 3 gets multiplied by the 1 12th, 3 12 1 4th. When you are given information in cubic units, what is that referring to? <laughs> Excuse me. Is it um, volume? Volume is in cubic units. Three dimensions, squared units, area, two dimensions. Units of the first power, like a distance, a length. Okay, so think about that. You know, cubic, three dimensions, volume, square dimensions, areas. Write down information using calculus notation for the given situation. Air is being blown into the balloon at a rate of 10 cubic feet per second. That's just giving me the change in the volume. I know that it's the change in volume because it's in cubic units. Surface of a square is increasing by 4 meters per second. That's the change in the surface area. Um, maybe dSA over dt is equal to 4. A circular cross-section of a sphere is growing at 2 feet squared per minute. Uh, so they must be talking about area, the area of like a circle. That's two. Height of the water is decreasing. It's very important when you read decreasing, the change is thought of to be negative. All right. X and Y are changing with respect to time. The sum of X and Y are constant. X plus Y is some constant. Write an expression that gives the relationship between how quickly x and y must be changing. Um, okay. dx dt plus dy dt equals zero. So they're going to have to be opposites of each other. All right. Interesting. Solve the related rates problem. Given W equals X squared Y. X is decreasing at a rate of two units per minute, and Y is increasing at a rate of three units per minute. What rate is W changing when X equals four and Y equals five? All right, so this is when we start understanding and translating um, this into the calculus notation. So X is decreasing at a rate of two. So DX dt is negative two. Y is increasing. DY dt is three. There's just distances. We are trying to find dw dt at the moment when x is 4 and y is 5. Okay, so I'll take the derivative of this with respect to t, and I get dw dt equals, it's a product, make sure you use the product rule. 2x dx dt y plus dy dt times x squared. Then we start filling in the information that we have. So we got uh, w dt equals 2 times 4 times negative 2 times 5 plus should be y dy dt. y dt is 3, x is 4. Uh, a little bit of calculations we could do by hand to, but I'm going to do it with the calculator real quick. And I get negative 32. Uh, if you need practice with your arithmetic, you should do this by hand. It'd be in units per minute. Volume of water in a container can be determined by its height, volume. So these uh, related rates problems we're starting with are, are simple because they're giving you the formula. Not much crazy kind of uh, understanding of the situation. The volume is given by the following equation. Find the rate of change of the volume of the water. Okay, so I'm trying to find dv dt. It's from here. 
given that the height is changing, so dh dt is 1 when h is 2. Okay? So this is what I'm trying to find. To find dv dt, I'll take the derivative of v, getting the formula dv dt equals. You know, I could just distribute this, and it might be easier to deal with. Uh, well, why not? This is like 60h plus 20h cubed. So maybe I just take the derivative of this. I get 60dh dt plus 60h squared dh dt. Derivative h cubed, 3h squared dh dt. So dv dt equals 60 times 1 plus 60 times 4 times 1. So 240 plus 60 uh, is 300. And that's the volume, so feet cubed per second. Surface area of an object can be determined by the area of its base such that surface area equals e to the b, and b is the area of the base. Determine how quickly the base area is changing, given the surface area is changing by 10 squared feet per second when b is 5 squared feet. Okay, very interesting. Uh, so dsa dt is equal to 10. Uh, b is 5, and I want to find db dt. Okay. So, take the derivative of SA equals e to the b. I get dSA over dt equals might as well just write this one down. Making sure I take the derivative of e to the b correctly. It's got an outside and an inside. And the derivative of the outside would be e to the power. The derivative of the inside would be dB dt. So this would be e to the b dB dt. dSA is 10. B is 5. And I find dB dt. 10 over e to the fifth. Okay. The balloon is being blown up at a rate of 10 cubic feet per second. How fast is the radius changing when its radius is 5 feet? So since it's being blown up at a rate of a cubic, you can tell that's the change in the volume. That's the one kind of tricky part of this problem. dv dt is 10. Try to figure out dr dt when r is 5. So I'll take the derivative of the volume of a sphere, dv dt equals... We did this earlier, it's 4 pi r squared dr dt. 10 equals 4 pi times 25 times dr dt. We get dr dt equals 10 over 100 pi or 1 over 10 pi. Uh, radius is a unit to the first power, so this would be feet per second. Given the information you found from the previous problem, how quickly the balloon's surface area is changing at that same moment. Okay, so when R is 5, what's dSA dt? Okay, and I found the R dt from earlier. Well, maybe I'll talk about that later. Let's see. DSA over DT would equal 8 pi R dr DT. So it's 8 times pi times 5, but what's dr DT? I actually had to use the previous question to find dr DT. So I need to use this 1 over 10 pi, which is the dr DT at R equals 5. The radius is not going to be changing consistently if the volume is changing. So it's this 
a specific change in the radius at this specific moment. I can do a little bit of simplification. Pi's cancel. This is 40 divided by 10, which is just 4 squared units. Per second. Okay, now this is kind of the same situation as the previous two problems, only I, I give it to you all at once. Okay, so I'm telling you the surface area is growing. How fast is the volume of the sphere growing when the radius of the sphere is two feet? Okay, so I got two equations the surface area of a sphere, 4 pi r squared, and the volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed. The question is. What is dV dt given that dSA dt is 20 when r is 2? Okay, so we want to find dV dt. We, we'll see if we take the derivative of v right off the get-go. dV dt equals 4 pi r squared dr dt. Then I'm going to need to find dr dt. But I uh, don't have dr dt. I just have r and I have dsa. So that's why I'm going to have to take the derivative of this and find dr dt to then find dv dt. So this derivative is 8 pi r dr dt, dsa dt is 20, r is 2, so I have 16 pi dr dt. I solve for dr dt and I get 5 over 4 pi after simple. All right, so we got dr dt. Now we can find dv dt. 4 times pi times r squared. r squared is 2. My cursor just disappeared. There it is. So this is 4. The RDT is 5 over 4 pi. 4 pi is cancel. 4 times 5 is 20. So that's dv dt in cubic feet per second. So I pretty much did this first, and then I took that and plugged it in there, and I did this second. But yeah, we're good. All right, the sphere is expanding in such a way that the area of any circular cross section through the sphere center is increasing at four squared centimeters per second, how quickly is the sphere's volume changing when its radius is 30? So this is a situation where we need the formula for the area of a circle. This will not be given to you. You need to know this formula, area of a circle is pi r squared. We're told earlier the volume of a sphere, you will not have to uh, memorize this. Okay, And you're trying to find dv dt when r is 3, and we got that uh, and the ADT is 4. Okay, let's see how that works out. Well, again, like I'm trying to find dv dt, but what I'll find is that I need, I'll need how quickly the radius is changing. DVD dt is 4 pi r squared dr dt. I need dr dt. I will find dr dt by taking the derivative of a. I get da dt is 2 pi r dr dt. r is 3, da dt is 4. I found dr dt is 2 over 3 pi. Make sure you divide by 6 and pi. The pi has to be in the denominator. I can take that dr dt, plug it in there, find dv dt. 
I got 4 pi 9 2 over 3 pi. Cancel, cancel. This will turn into a 3. 4 times 3 times 2 is 24. That is the volume. That is dV dt. That is in cubic units. So centimeters cubed per second. The area of a square is increasing by 2 squared feet per second. How fast are the side lengths changing when the side length is 4 feet? Okay, so it's very important um, to think about the area of a square not being as a length times width, but as a side length quantity squared. If you're doing length and width, um, you can figure it out as long as you understand that L would equal W and like DLDT would equal DWDT. But save yourself a little bit of mental energy and just use this. Uh, before I take the derivative of this, let's just talk about what I can give. I'm given that DADT is 2. I'm trying to find DSDT when S is 4. So I get DADT equals 2S DSDT. 2 equals 2 times 4 DSDT. 8 is 1 fourth. The length should be feet per second. Okay, excellent. Circle is growing at some point. The area of a circle is growing at twice the rate of the circumference. What is the radius length at that point? Okay, cool. So, at some point, the area of a circle is growing at twice the rate of the circumference. So, dc dt times 2 will give us the adt. What is the radius at that point? So I'm just trying to find r. Great question, because what we'll need, what will not be given to you, you need to know the area formula for a circle and the circumference formula for a circle. And we'll have to use this fact, and we'll have to substitute in, and there's a lot of different ways to do this. You don't have to do it my way. There's other ways to kind of figure this out. You substitute in this information so that I can find R. So, I mean, let's just, like, take the derivative, and let's see what we can do to find R. I kind of want to use this dc dt formula first because R is gone. And I feel like I can find some information about, uh, I mean, to find R, I'm going to need DADT, I'm going to need DRDT, and after I get that, I'll be good. I mean, like, I could plug in 2 DCDT here, divide by 2, and then set them equal to each other. All of a sudden, I'm firing R. I could find and substitute in uh, one half the ADT here, multiplied by two, then set them equal to each other. It's all it's all what you call uh, what you want to do. I think it'll be easy since it's already set up to substitute in two DC DT in for DADT, and when I divide by two, I get a formula for DC DT. So DC DT can be replaced by pi r dr dt. So this is going to get replaced by that. And this becomes pi r dr dt equals 2 pi dr dt. And what we find is the dr dt's cancel, the pi's will cancel when I divide, and I'll get r is 2. Isn't that neat? Other ways to do it. All right, I've never done this problem. I'm excited to do this problem. Let's see. A circle is inscribed in a square, as shown in the figure below. The circumference of the circle is increasing at a constant rate. DC dt is 6. As the circle expands, the square expands to maintain the condition of tangency. So we got this circumscribed circle. Find the rate at which the perimeter of the square is increasing. Okay, so dp dt equals what? 
I think the key to this is going to be the relationship between the perimeter of the circle and the radius of the circle, uh, the perimeter of the square and the radius of the circle. So like, you know, there's a lot of uh, things we can do here. Like we could start with the formula for P equals 4S for the circle and like C equals 2 pi R. Um, but I got to have a relationship between S and R. And this won't be that tough. Well, we know that since R, the radius of the circle, will be the same everywhere, the distance across the entire square would be 2R. So S would equal 2R. And same here, this S will be 2R. So you can either say like, yeah, so since S is 2R, P is going to be 4 times 2R or 8R. Now, if I want to find dP dt, I just need 8 times dr dt. I don't have dr dt, but I can find it. Take the derivative of this using red. dc dt equals 2 pi dr dt. dc dt is 6. dr dt will be 6 over 2 pi, which is 3 over pi. Plug that in. And we get dp dt equals 8 times 3 over pi, so 24 over pi. Perimeter is just a distance, so it'll just be inches per second. All right, fun question. Um, a couple more. Talking about if you have fixed values, you can uh, simplify your equation before you take the derivative. It's very, very important or else things can get complicated. You will be able to solve them, but um, man, I'm going to preach very often uh, this lesson and especially next lesson. If you see fixed values, plug them in to have a specific equation for your specific situation. Okay, so we got a rectangle whose length is 4, is growing in size. How quickly is the area of the rectangle cha changing? Area of rectangle is length times width. When its width is 5 and growing at 2 inches per second. So width is 5. And dw dt equals 2. So like, if I took the derivative, and this is only for you video people, you'll be able to see this because I'm going to erase this. You get dA dt equals, and then like, yeah, you got to use the product rule here. dL dt w plus dW dt L. And like, you could plug in 5, you could plug in 2, you could plug in 4. Like, you don't know what dL dt is. It's not given to you. But actually, you do. Since the rectangle has a length of 4, four inches, and it's growing in size, uh, this is confusing. Like, the rectangle is growing in size, the width is changing, but the length is 4. I think, I think what we're saying is, like, the length is 4, it's the width that is changing. So since the length is constantly 4, the change in the length is 0 since it's constant. Like that sometimes confusing and um, I, I think sometimes the, actually the wording of this question is a little confusing, but you know, I'm trying to lead you in this question to understand the length is four and it's fixed. Since it's fixed, just plug it in and this is now the area of this rectangle. And it'll always be the area of this rectangle. And you'll find you won't even need W. dA dt 
equals 4 dw dd, you just get 8. And it's an area, so it's in squared feet per second. Squared inches per second. Okay, cylindrical tank. I would give you the formula for the volume of a cylinder. Pi r squared h. Ms. Osberg, you might want to slide to a different desk just to help out the team. So the radius is 2. Losing water, dv dt, negative 4. How fast is the height of the water changing? So if you took the derivative of this, you'd have to use the product rule, and it's going to be very messy. Instead, if you think about a cylinder, a cylinder will always, always have a constant radius. So the radius would never be changing. The RDT would never be a number. So this is always fixed. So instead of taking the derivative of pi r squared h, take the derivative of 4 pi h because r is fixed. The volume of this cylinder will always be 4 pi h. Now we can take the derivative, getting us dv dt equals 4 pi dh dt. dv dt negative 4, dh dt will be negative 1 over pi. This would be in feet per second. It is just a distance. Okay. Uh, that's it. Uh, these are kind of tricky. It's one thing to just copy down the key or to watch me do it. The other thing is to just do it yourself. So please, please, you should be trying all of these problems by yourself. Thank you.